Hey, what's up guys? It's Rick with the Digital Divide. Today we're going to talk about Microsoft's ambitions of taking over the world. Today they bought Activision Blizzard for one million dollars. No, I'm just kidding. They spent $68.7 billion buying Activision Blizzard. And to me, it, it's a little baffling. I, it took me a couple days to sit down and think about this. To give you some perspective, if you take a look at Microsoft's annual revenue worldwide, and this is not Xbox, and it's not specific to their gaming division. This is Microsoft as a whole. If you take a look at all of the cash that they have on hand, they netted $168.9 billion in 2021. So what they spent to buy Activision Blizzard is approximately half of all of the capital they have as a company total. And that that's just mind boggling. So you might be asking yourself, but why? We don't have time for questions. And you'd be smart to ask, why? What makes Activision Blizzard so important as a company and what can they contribute to Microsoft specifically to help them grow as uh, their gaming division? Let's take a look at some of their IPs. So Activision has Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. If you look at the right, you'll see um, the image from their recently released remaster of the game. But as a standalone franchise, they haven't had a good game released for it in a while. Their last few uh, were not well received received and didn't sell well, which is why the series went dormant for so long before this remaster. And then they've got uh, Guitar Hero. Guitar Hero, again, is, is a franchise that was hugely popular when it first released back on the PlayStation 2 and throughout the Xbox 360 era. But the last release in that franchise was in 2015 with Guitar Hero Lives, and that that genre of game with the plastic peripherals has has lost a ton of popularity. Crash Bandicoot is another example of a game franchise that launched on the PlayStation and it is closely associated with Sony. Now, assuming that this deal goes through, it will be an Xbox-owned franchise, but again, this is a series that has long since been dormant. The first three releases came out on the PlayStation, and its subsequent releases were not well received. There was a recent reboot of sorts with Crash Bandicoot 4, it's about time, and that was relatively well received, but didn't sell crazy numbers. And again, this is a family-friendly platformer that is not typically associated with the Xbox brand. Spyro the Dragon is another example of a uh, family-friendly platformer that you do not typically associate with the brand of Xbox. Uh, when it comes to Xbox, you typically think first-person shooters, that sort of thing, competitive online uh, gaming. You don't think of Spyro, so to spend this much money on a number of these franchises just doesn't make a ton of sense to me. So if you're thinking first-person shooters, Call of Duty comes to mind. The issue with Call of Duty is that it's declined in popularity amongst gamers almost every single year. It started out hugely popular, but has gone down because, frankly, every single year it's either a World War II game or a modern game, and it alternates between the two with very little innovation. Its most recent release was Call of Duty Vanguard, and that was, by all indication, the worst-selling Call of Duty game that has been released in quite some time, despite the fact I, I think it was actually a pretty fun single player game. I enjoyed it thoroughly. Along with this acquisition, Microsoft also purchased Blizzard Entertainment and King, and both of those are huge, huge gets. But World of Warcraft, Hearthstone, Starcraft, Heroes of the Storm, those are all PC-centered games. Those are not on console. Now, games like Diablo and Overwatch are on console, and I don't mean to undermine those. Those are big games. Those are, those are huge games, especially Diablo, in my opinion. I love that series, but these are franchises that have waned in popularity over the years due to a lot of recent controversy within Blizzard. King is another studio that came along with this acquisition, but they're more centered towards uh, mobile gaming, games like Candy Crush, Pet Rescue, Farm Heroes, Bubble Witch, those are all cell phone games that do not appeal to Xbox's demographic, and they hold very little appeal to the core gamer that I think Xbox's demographic appeals to. As a company, they've been inundated with a ton of 
sexual harassment and discrimination lawsuits and claims against their company. Their CEO, Bobby Kotick, has engulfed himself in controversy as well by a number of questionable acts on his part. As a result of all of these years of controversy, um, in 2021 especially, their, their stock has taken a huge hit. If you can see here on the graph, it's declined and declined and declined. Uh, right around here is, is, is when those allegations hit, and a lot of those allegations have been substantiated. And their, their stock prices hit a low of about $65 at the time that Microsoft announced their intentions to purchase the company. And you can see the huge spike there in the blue. But even, even though their stock was only at $65 a share, Microsoft still decided to buy them out at $95 a share. So I think they grossly overpaid for the company. In addition to that, even after all that money spent, if you combine Xbox and Activision, that still puts them squarely in third place when it comes to gaming companies by revenue. They're still behind Sony and Tencent, even after this acquisition. So. Either you buy the company for the IP or you buy it to gain market share. And in this case, they're really not getting either. So what's next for Microsoft? What's their next move? To what end do they feel the need to spend this much money? What's their end goal here? So let's talk about that. I think by far the biggest name that they acquired by doing this is Call of Duty. That that, Despite its decline over the years, it's still a massive, massive IP to get and to call exclusive. But the biggest reason for that is because every year without fail, Call of Duty is the best selling game every single year that it comes out. But if you take it away from PlayStation gamers, then you're instantly cutting your annual revenue in half by at least half, I would say 50 to 60% of their sales every year come from PlayStation gamers, whether it's on PlayStation 4 or 5 combined every year. When you take that away, you're losing a lot of revenue. And if you couple that with the fact that most Xbox owners have Game Pass, and this is now going to be a franchise that is going to be free since it's a first party title, you're losing that revenue also. So Call of Duty goes from being the best selling game every year to not even making the chart after this acquisition is in place. Most acquisitions happen naturally. They happen organically and they happen over the course of years of a mutual partnership uh, with a specific company. So if you work with somebody for a long time and you guys are both benefiting from that relationship, then that's typically how acquisitions are formed in the business industry. And that's why companies like Sony are so successful because they are very strategic in who they decide to acquire and, and why. A good example of that would be Insomniac Games. And they've had a long-standing relationship for, for many, many years now. They were a second party uh, development house for Sony. Sony owned the IPs for Ratchet and Clank, for example, and they would hire a company like Insomniac Games to develop games for IPs that they owned. And that relationship was very, very successful. Sony bought that company for $229 million, and that was a steal. And, and what did they get out of that? So far in the PlayStation 5 era alone, Insomniac has produced two amazing launch titles for them. One of them was Spider-Man Miles Morales, and the other one was Ratchet and Clank. Both of those games were not only huge commercial successes, they both sold incredibly well and moved a lot of hardware for Sony. Sony also picked up developer Housemark, who they have a long-standing relationship with as well. Just like Insomniac Games, they've been working almost exclusively with PlayStation all the way back to the PS3 days. I remember playing a game called Super Stardust, back when I picked up my first PS3 and that game was amazing and it still is today. They also developed a game called Returnal for the PlayStation 5, which again was a huge critical and commercial success for them. Now Microsoft has had acquisitions similar to those in the past. For example, they picked up Bethesda Game Studios and that was an organic, natural evolution of their relationship because like Insomniac Games for Sony, Xbox had a long-standing relationship with Bethesda all the way back to the original Xbox days um, when Morrowind came out on that platform as an exclusive. And they continued that relationship over the years and Xbox ended up buying Bethesda and that made sense and in my opinion the IP that they picked up through Bethesda is way more valuable than what they picked up through 
Activision and they spent a tenth of the price doing it. They got franchises like Doom, Fallout, Elder Scrolls, Wolfenstein, Dishonored, Prey, The Evil Within, and the upcoming Starfield. And those, I think, are way more relevant than the catalog of IP that Activision has because those most of those IPs are, are long dormant and don't hold as much sway with the modern core gamer. Now some are going to say that this deal is a monopoly and it puts them in a position where they're monopolizing the gaming industry and while I won't go that far to say that I agree with it what I will say is that it is a step in that direction. So I'm torn because on the one hand, I love Xbox. It's my most played console these days, mostly because of Game Pass. And what this acquisition means is that I'll get more quote unquote free games through my Game Pass subscription. But on the other hand, I think that consolidation is bad for the industry. I think that anything that discourages competition is bad for the industry. I think that competition is good for the industry and it encourages innovation because when you have no one to compete with your incentive to compete against yourself is pretty much zero a good example for this is when ea sports bought the nfl license they're the only ones who can make official nfl football games and as a result that series has stagnated over the years and become less and less relevant because there's no one to compete with or push them to to move forward so that's going to do it for me today guys as always i appreciate you listening and in this video especially i really really want to hear your thoughts because i i find this particular acquisition really interesting i think it's going to change our industry as a whole in very very dramatic ways that we can't possibly fathom yet or so leave a comment in the video below and if again and if you like the video just give it a like if you didn't give it a dislike thanks for your time